Hello and welcome. Thank you very much to everybody who is joining the webinar this evening. Um, welcome, 1st of October, and today we are talking about what we can do in those last few weeks um, to help us pass our CTA and ATT exams. Um, if you don't know who I am by now, um, where have you been? Well, where have you been? <laughs> um, this is the third webinar in the series. And if you missed the first two, then please ask me for the link at any time. Um, do listen to them, especially I found the APS webinar was just eye opening. I thought the APS webinar with all of those um, helpful tips and the different techniques on the APS paper really fantastic so if you need that link please please do let me know um anyway on with the show i'm ali humphreys i'm md at protax um, and we provide recruitment services to tax professionals like yourself um people looking in practice and in-house but um that's not what we're here for today that's enough from me um i am here to facilitate this evening to get you through your exams and nothing more so um autumn would you like to introduce yourself to the uh, crowd please yeah, so some of you might have seen me on the last recording. Um, I'm Autumn. I work at Ross Martin. Um, I do a bit of tax writing and advice over there. Um, I passed my exams in 22. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to provide you with lots of tips on what I did to pass the first time. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Nitin, can you introduce yourself? If people don't know who you are, then they must be in Mars. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Nitin, Nitin Riveru. I'm a senior tax tutor at BPP. Uh, been there for over 24 years. Um, I teach pretty much all things CTA, ATT and tax across all the different uh, syllabus streams. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, to everybody who's joined today, um, we want this session to be interactive. Um, it really is about what you guys can get out of this. It's not about two or three people speaking. Um, please ask questions throughout. Use the chat function at the top. And what I will try and do is get all of those questions over to Nitin and Autumn. Um, but this is your webinar. So get what you want out of it. So that's really important. Um, so um, thank you very much for that. Um, what we'll do is we'll start with some um, questions. To we'll, we'll go to Autumn and Nick, but Autumn, if we can go to you first, please. Um, what should students not be doing during the revision phase? Um, well, first thing I'd definitely say is stop reading the study manuals at this stage. <laughs> I think sometimes you can get in the habit of feeling not ready for like question practice or to like move on into full revision mode. Um, but the worst thing you can do is stay in the study manuals and not actually take that step. It's better to attempt questions knowing you're going to get 100% wrong than not to attempt them. I'd much rather you be attempting questions and using that to guide your study rather than just reading through the study manual in order. You're not going to get as much as you would with question practice out of that, if that makes sense. Right. Anything else? It, what, I, what I do in revision is I actually did a webinar recently on this, which I'm sure you can share the link if I send it to you because that's also a free recording. Um, but okay. what I do with revision is I'd get a question and, a li and don't blitz through these questions. You can literally learn so much just from doing one question at a time. And I break it down in steps. So I read the question and that's line by line, pulling out all the key facts and scenarios. And I think the first step of doing that, especially if it's the first couple of exam level questions that you're doing, can be really intimidating because you're like, oh my goodness, I've missed things and I don't know what that means. And you start panicking, but it's just sitting there and actually thinking, well, what does this mean? How much can I drag out of that information? And then the next stage is attempting that question. And don't be tempted to go to the answer, even if you still don't have a clue what you're doing. Don't go straight to the answer, at least attempt it because the errors that you make through doing that are be things that you can learn from and you'll remember making those errors when you're actually in towards the exam or when you're in the exam scenario. Um, and then afterwards, it's all about taking a step back and actually debriefing properly. So going through, yes, the examiner script, but that's a perfect answer. You're not going to reproduce that in the exam. What's more important is actually the examiner comments, candidate scripts, and actually reflecting on where you went wrong and identifying why. It's not so important that you got anything wrong. It's more important that you actually look at why you got that wrong and then how are you going to fix that? Do you need to go back over a topic? Do you need to attempt more questions on the topic? And if you're still struggling, then start to reach out to either colleagues, tutors, anybody will be happy to help you. But it's all being more accountable for your revision, if that makes sense, instead of just 
plowing through it and mindlessly doing things you've got to be constantly thinking well what can i do to improve for next time and that's the key difference between students who pass adult you've got to actively be doing things to improve yourself mm -hmm. that makes sense. i don't know what you've got to add to that did it? <laughs> okay so in terms of saying what you sh that was brilliant autumn um i would say i agree number one uh leave the study manuals alone now okay mm -hmm. that's not going to help you um number two my biggest problem with students is they basically put all their eggs in one basket and have this attitude that if i complete a cta revision question bank then i'm guaranteed the pass you're not yeah and you've got to remember the examiner doesn't repeat the same question again okay that's really really key it's all about you've got like like autumn said you've got to with a cta exam there will be similar issues and transactions and so the biggest complaint we get from students after an exam is oh it wasn't it was tested very differently okay it wasn't the same as the may sitting it wasn't the same as the previous sittings and with it, but it was still it still was tax okay and i think a lot of students um heavily rely on the repetition concept which can happen in other qualifications and i think that's really really key so those are i'd say the main two things uh, and also, I, I, I'd say the last thing is not having the right mindset. And this is why, thanks, Ali, to you and Pro Recruitment Group for kind of hosting this and really getting people in the mindset. I mean, a lot of people will be feeling, I don't have enough time. I haven't done enough work. Um, but, you know, and hopefully Autumn will back me up here. You know, you do have enough time. OK, it doesn't matter if you started a little bit slow. OK, you can play catch up if you work effectively. So those are the things you've got to be careful of. Brilliant. Um, what are the main challenges, Nit, um, for an ATT or CTA student during revision, which they need to be mindful of? I and Autumn hit it on the head. It sounds like someone's taught you really well, Autumn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I had some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For those of you that don't know, Autumn's really humble with this, and I, I love her to bits. Uh, she's a quadruple prize winning CTA student. Yeah. And what I love about Autumn, and she won't mind me saying this, things do not come naturally to Autumn. Am I right? Yeah. You I've graph. Had to work very hard. <laughs> this girl graphs, you know, and that's what I love about her. She's humble um, and she doesn't hide. You know, when you speak to some people, you know, they they often say, oh, it's a breeze. It's this, it's that. Autumn tells you how it is. And what I love about Autumn, she's an inspiration. And I would say the main challenges are, OK, yes, we hear it a lot that CTA is difficult. I can tell you right now it's possible. OK, it's really, really possible. And I think the first challenge you've got to have is believe in yourself. OK, the second challenge, um, Ali and Autumn, I think a lot of people have a lot of stuff going on at work and in their personal lives. And I've talked about this before. And I, you really need to think about, is this for you for November? I'm going to put that, put it out there. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Have a think. Are, are you, can you manage this? Okay. Number three, if you're doing two papers, I was doing an APS session last night um, for the CIOT. And I had one student say, I'm actually not coping. You know, I'm doing the advanced technical and I'm doing the APS at the same time. And I actually had a chat with this student and said, well, look, why don't you just stop doing the APS? and just focus on one paper, you know, that's going to really help you, you know, so you've got to do that. And I think the first challenge is you. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to find an environment where you can actually study effectively. And I don't think people take that seriously, you know, um, and I think I'm, I'm a big fan of don't, it, after work, don't study at home. Now, I could be wrong unless you've got children and you need to. I get that. But if you have the option of staying at work just a bit an hour later, it makes a big difference. Even on a weekend, go to the library, go to the office where it's quiet, where you can just focus. I think the environment around you is also a challenge, OK, that can affect or it can enhance your progress. Um, and I think the third challenge is have an effective timetable. Yeah, I think if the one thing all of you should be doing, if you haven't done it already, is go through your timetable from now until four days before the exam 
and plot in what you're going to do. Yeah. And what you and as, as Autumn said brilliantly earlier, each day you want to make mistakes. Yeah. But every mistake you make to me is progress. Yeah. And that's really key. So I get a lot of students panicking, saying, Nit, I'm getting so many things wrong. And I'll give you an example on a 15 mark question. This student said, oh, I got I got eight marks wrong. But I said, but you got seven marks right. Yeah. So to me, that's seven marks of brilliance. OK, and eight marks of development. OK, and I see a lot and a lot of students don't look at it that way. Yeah. And I'm going to say this autumn knows this chat. Guys, you're doing ATT, you're doing CTA. Yeah, you are in an elite position already. The average person can't cope with ATT and CTA. Just looking at the manuals, I'll probably pass out. OK, so you're already an elite individual. Yeah, you've got this final step. You're there. Yeah. Yeah. So autumn. <laughs> Just going back to that, to the mindset kind of point is when I don't know if you remember this conversation, Nitin, but I rang you up just before my first CTA exam. Well, yeah. about two, two to three months it was before. Yeah. In an absolute panic and what I was actually doing is just applying what study methods I'd used previously in my ACCA exams and I was literally going through the chapter trying to understand each chapter and I was just drown I was drowning I was like what am I going to do and you said to me that and I don't know if you remember saying this is you've done ACCA you're not likely to pass and I went yeah <laughs> and yeah my mindset was like, right, I'm just going to give it everything I've got for the next two and a half months. I cleared my diary completely, made a plan and stuck to it. Um, I actually attended your revision course as well, which really helped. But it's just literally all you need to do is just push yourself to think more positively about things. I could have been at that moment, right, I'll just defer. There's no point of even trying. But instead, I was like, I'm going to give this my best. And like, what have I got to lose? Well, I can learn loads of stuff and I'll be in a better position when I do reset. And having that mindset really helps. It takes a bit of pressure off as well. If you give yourself permission to, if it's okay to fail, it's not the end of the world. Mm. You you just reset that. It's just six months, and six months in terms of la your life is nothing. So it's just having the right approach to things really helps. It takes a bit of pressure off you as well. So yeah, something I, you touched yeah. On there. Sorry, Ali. Ali, sorry. Just one one thing on ACCA <laughs> students, um, and I, I say it all the time. And Autumn is, uh, and there's another student of mine who, who won't mind me mentioning her name, Chelsea Stevenson. She was another ACCA student who changed their mindset. So I've actually had quite a few ACCA students quit. Yeah, they couldn't cope with CTA because they were so heavily reliant on the repetition of the question bank and they weren't able to transfer the skills to CTA. And I think anyone here that's got a previous qualification, don't give up do what Autumn did, do what Chelsea did, is you've got you've got to play by the CTA rules and not the ACCA. A minute you flip that switch, you're going to pass. Yeah, I That's... will just add to add to my position is that I was also in the situation where I had a very supportive employer in terms I wasn't doing much overtime. I literally just started working for them. Um, so also it's not just it's not just mindset, but that does play a big part. It's also looking at your personal situation. I don't have any outside work commitments, I don't have kids. So in theory, I had the time to give up. So it's also more looking at that as well, because you don't want to affect your mental health as well. You have to look after that really? first to be able to pass. Yeah. Um, just sort of just add that. <laughs> no, brilliant, brilliant. Sorry, Ali. Sorry. No, absolutely not. I'll, I'll just, just touch on that and to bring people who, who didn't see the first two webinars. One of the biggest things you explained, Nitin, was um, speak to the people in your personal life. Yeah. Speak to them and tell them you need the time. It's not long. Yeah. It's not for long. You are going to need their support, their space um, and, and all of that, which was really important. I picked up on one of the, the previous sessions. But, yeah. but Autumn, you, you mentioned something there when you said, I cleared my diary, I got myself a plan, and I just got at it. Yeah. Can you give us any indication as to what a plan needs to look like? It is a very difficult question to answer because it's very personal to me. So for me, okay. I, well, I, when I started CTA, my knowledge was very little of the UK tax system. In fact, I think every page I turned, I was like, this is new to me because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd spent the first two years of my career in Guernsey. So most of it was new. I'd done a bit of non-resident stuff, but that was it. Um, so for me, I, I knew I needed to go through all the content, but what I did was after speaking to Nick, I started with my revision question practice. I went to his revision course and I literally used then questions to guide. So I almost, it was more week by week. I'd look at what I did wrong in that week and I'd go off and revise those topics that I knew were my weaker areas. Um, 
and I literally had to prioritise them because everything was new pretty much. I had to go, well, this definitely needs to look out this week and push myself to not be perfect at the foot to a good standard because it's impossible to be perfect the whole content if it's pretty much new to you in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just being aware of yourself where you're going to gain the most marks. Okay, well, I know absolutely zero about this topic. I got one question, the whole question wrong. Let's do this topic first. And it's been disciplined as well in terms of not just skipping by things. If you don't understand it, try and address why you don't understand it. Fair enough. OK, um, uh, another question I've got of something that you've mentioned, Autumn, and, I, and I'm very happy for both of you to um, to answer. How is it best to approach an employer that's maybe putting on you? Um, you said, Autumn, you had a, a very um, supportive employer. We don't all have that. Um, yeah. You know, there are, there are some firms out there who want your blood um, and they don't care that you've got exams in six weeks because every single student they have has got exams in, in six weeks. So why are you any different? Um, have you uh, maybe advised people in the past, Nitin, of how to approach employers that, that aren't very understanding or supportive? Yeah, you get that. Unfortunately, it's, it's a difficult one. It, 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 there's no quick fix to this. I wish I had a magic wand and say it's going to be OK. Uh, I think the reality is so some students just try and persevere uh, and suffer in silence. The end result is I've seen a lot of students in the end realise, actually, I'm not going to pass if I stay with this employer. OK, some students say I'm going to take just a career. You know, I'm just going to take time out and study or some some people just move on. They move to an employer that is supportive, that is understanding. OK, and does care about their mental health, which I think is really key. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Um, uh, what, what advice, Autumn, would you give to students, given your amazing track record with exams and mm. prizes and all of those lovely things that you don't you you don't actually say to anybody you've got? <laughs> <laughs> um, what 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 advice have you got for these people sat there nervous about taking those last exams or in their, their first exams? Yeah, so it, they, they are a lot, CTA especially is a lot, like I found it so overwhelming, I know that, and it's more, first of all, mental health is more important than anything, like if, if you're not ready to do the exam, that's fine, you need to discuss with your employer or people around you about deferring it and what the right options are for you, um, but apart from that is you've got, for with CTA, you've got to enter with the mindset that it's okay to fail it, because there's just so much content that you've got to give you permission, self permission. Like it, you might have a bad day, you might not be on top of things. Like anything could happen, and that's how life works, unfortunately. Um, so it's all it's just be, being willing to accept that and have the attitude. Well, I'm just going to learn as much as I can anyway. Um, and I always say to people who are resitting, you're at, actually an advantage because you've had more time with the content. Because I do mm -hmm. think a lot of CTA just comes down to how much time you have. Um, so if you are resitting and you're a bit like feeling like, oh, I'm not I'm not clever enough for this or I don't know what I'm doing. It's not that it's just that you've not had the right amount of time to commit to it. Um, so if if you are recent, you've had that extra six months of looking at the content and getting familiar with it and you will. Even though a lot of students go, well, I've forgotten it all. You, you do remember it better. And I always think when you relearn something, you always learn it better anyway. Fantastic. Brilliant. OK. Um, Awesome. How did NIT help you prepare for your revision? Well, first of all, he gave me a big wake up call when he said I was going to fail. <laughs> but in terms of knitting, knitting's got a very unique approach to teaching. I've never experienced anybody quite like you knitting. I think you're great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but knitting can get you through questions in, in class like I've never experienced because he gets you through the questions. You're not doing them necessarily to time but you're planning them and you're basically getting that taught input cons like constantly throughout the revision rather than being left to your own devices to maybe attempt a question for 40 minutes or an hour and um, you've got that support and that's the bit you can attempt your question in your own time what you want is the support there of one how to read questions because knitting's way of reading questions is great you literally go for it line by line and assess all the different elements of the question that's how you need to be doing it in when you're on your own and when you're in the real exam. Um, so this is quite good at putting you in that exam situation from day one and getting you to think about the final exam whilst that you're doing the study process and the revision process in general. Um, so when you do get to doing the exam questions on your own or in the actual exam, 
you feel ready for it and more prepared, if that makes sense. So building on that, Ali, for every, anyone on this session right now or watching the recording, what I want you to be doing is exactly what Autumn just said. OK, if you if you're if you're short for time, you're tight for time. OK, I want you to pick a question. Re, re, put it on the computer screen. Read the requirement, half the marks. So if it's, a, if it's a 20 marker, your aim is to get 10 on the day minimum. But right now, try and get three out of 10. OK, read the question, plan it, think about what you would do. Then don't even look at the solutions. OK, literally go through the marking guide and focus on where you went wrong okay the key thing about october is to focus on where you go wrong put it on a watch out autumn knows about the watch outs okay they form your revision and your your technical knowledge is going to go next level it's going to fly yeah and autumn was great and when i because i speak to a lot of acca students and as all my my and i was like oh here's another one here we go <laughs> okay and um and she delivered. And on the revision course, if you remember, Autumn, I was quite honest and blunt with people. Yeah, you know, I, I was it, definitely that's the first revision course I've been to in, in since doing professional qualifications that I actually felt very behind everybody else. Um, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm the I'm the one holding everyone up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which but, that, that's never yeah. happened to me before in that situation. Cause I'm normally quite an organized person. I've gone through all the content before the lesson, like, but I just didn't have time for that. Um, so it was great in terms of you kept pushing me to yeah. move forward and keep progressing rather than getting stuck on minor yeah. things that weren't worth the time. And that's a brilliant thing, Ali, that Autumn's picked up on. I think a lot of students waste time on niche areas, obscure areas, and oh, I must get that. Just let it go, let it go, you know? And I, I was in class today, I finished, I was teaching advanced level tax, and I had a student, we wasted half an hour on something, she just wouldn't let it go. And it wasn't even relevant to the exam, you know? And and you try and say it politely, and I said it a few times, and Autumn knows, then, then you get the strict knit, okay? And she didn't like it. You know, but I said, like, I'm protecting you. Just, it, you know, yes, you're still going to get 98% if that's what you want. Yeah, let the 2% go. And I think that's what that also holds a lot of students back in October and they get demotivated. Yeah, you the glass is always half full. You know, and that's that's the beauty of CTA. You're going to pass. You know, you've mm -hmm. just got like autumn, just got to believe in yourself. Yeah, I think it's easy to get frustrated at CT. I know it happens to be quite a lot. I try not yep. to, but it does end up you get frustrated because <laughs> you forget things and you you go, why, oh, why didn't I get that? Why did I forget that? But it happens and you just have to keep going. Like you yeah. have, don't let it get to you. You just have to literally keep going. Put it on your watch out and know that you're going to read through your watch outs at a certain later date in time. And it's there and you've looked at it and you're going to learn from it. And that's the attitude you have to have because there's just so much content for these exams. And I think the other thing as well, Ali, taking this a little bit further, it's not just revision that people have got to focus on here. You've got to have an exam game plan. And do you remember Autumn, we had this chat? Yeah. yeah. And, and the exam game plan is critical to anyone here. Right. So the NIT view, OK, the NIT view is if you're doing an advanced technical paper that has six questions, you need to be ready what your final question is going to be. Yeah. And Autumn, if you remember, the final question is always going to be, the easiest one. Yeah, because once you're three hours in and you are sh mentally shattered, you, you know you've got 10 marks banked. You've already got 10 marks clocked. You know it's it's the it's your nicest question, be it, it could be an adjustments question with capital allowances, it could be an income tax comp, an IHT comp, whatever. But you want to save your best one till last. And a lot of people say to me, Oh, I need to do the first one, you know, I need to do the easy one to get my confidence going. I personally don't believe in that school of thought. Yeah. OK, I believe in. Look, you got you got three and a half hours. Go for the attack. Go for the kill. The first question should always be the written question. Yeah, because the written questions at CTA Autumn never believed me. They are the easiest ones because there are easy marks you can get by short applied sentences. OK, because most students will leave the written questions until the end, not finish them, put in loads of waffle, drop marks. OK, and if you can think about your exam strategy, Again, that will, that's going to really help you. That's what I get my students to do, those that listen. Yeah, I am, I am going to disagree with you slightly on that point. I know you will. Um, I knew you so, would. <laughs> I think you know what you know, but I have to go 
from question one to question six. Or I know, whatever that's why I brought is. it up. That's yeah. why I brought it up. So that, I think that's the difference between being a normal student that like you have to know what works for you and doesn't work yeah, for you. And you agreed. have to, because Nick can have the best plan in the world, but it might not work for every individual. You have to adapt agreed. what Nick's saying to you. And that's yeah. the key difference between a student who will pass and a student who will fail. A student who will fail or rely on what other people tell them rather than actually thinking for themselves what actually works for them yeah. and trying it out as well. Because I did try Nick's approach and I just got too stressed with it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just have yeah. to go in order. Um, but that's yeah. just me. Some I people know, do it though. No, it's not just agree. me. <laughs> yeah, it is. But you, you know actually, how that you you approach. You know how you approach everything in life, right? So yeah. that's how you know a, a lot of people like to just eat their frog, right? So the first thing mm. in the morning, if you've got a big to do list, it's like just do the things that you've been putting off for ages. Just get them done, and then you'll have a better day. Or some people will put it off and then do it at the end of the day because they're disciplined and they don't mind doing that. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. And I think that the, the message here is there's no right or wrong. Yeah, but have a plan. Yeah, have yeah. a plan so you're not dithering on the day. That that that's the key message. Yeah. So I knew before I went into the exam, I yeah. was going one, two, three, four, five, six. I wasn't deciding on the day. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like know what you're gonna do, and then also know your timings as well. Like move on um, yeah. from the next question. And if you have time to go back because you've made up time in a different question, great. But if you don't, then at least you've maximised the marks you're gonna get. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Um, Nit, you've got some you, some specific advice for students four days before the real exam. Um, can yeah. you share that with us? Yeah, uh, uh, to be fair, for me on an autumn, I think this was one of the biggest challenges with autumn and any student that I come across. When you talk to most CTA students and you ask them, what are you doing on the last four days uh, before the real exam? A lot of students will say, I'm um, question practice, I'm um, cramming, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. And I think, no, no. The last four days before the exam, no more question practice. OK, um, I've been using this technique for 24 years. Um, it's important that students stop. OK, what you need to be doing on the last four days is physically rest your fingers because you're going to be typing for three and a half hours. So I think the body needs to, you need to give your body time to recover for what's coming in the exam. Um, what I want students to do is I want all my students, be it the APS paper, is slightly different with the pre-scene, but the advanced technical papers, Ali and Autumn, I want them to read every single question again on the computer screen. And I want them to read it, read the requirement, halve the marks, Go line by line and very quickly think about the issues in their head. Quickly and, and you know, like five minutes and then quickly look at the answer. Did you pick up? And what you're then doing is you're 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 picking on the, the bits that you're forgetting. It kind of so you make your final set of watch out notes. Don't forget this, don't forget that. And a lot and students don't appreciate the power of this because what you're doing in the last four days is mimicking the exam scenario. That when you walk in that exam, you have trained your brain to spot those issues. You are gonna be faster, sharper, slicker, and it works. Okay, mm -hmm. it literally works. One thing I'll add to that is, because you're actually in a great position if you start doing this now. So when I did a question, I had a little list for each question of think key things I got wrong or missed. And so when I was doing what Nick said, reading through the question again, I also referred to that list. And that's again, it's almost like a watch out list for each question. Again, just remind yourself of the errors that you've made and why you've made them. You actually get to a point where you start remembering what er errors you've made when you're reading yeah. through the questions. And then that's a great position to be in because you're never going to make that error again at that point. And that's the 60 second checklist. Do you remember? That's what I called it. Yeah. Awesome. You know, so one of the things what students need to be doing now, if you get whatever topic you get, think about what are the five to seven keywords. Yeah, the checklist that you need. It can be on anything. And if you forget some of those, so so when you're ready to apply your knowledge, that's where the marks are, because the marking guide will have those key points in there as well. Or and also know your pro formers. OK, and so it's really about fine tuning. And if you do that, you know, I've seen students go from 20 percent to 70 percent. Yeah, from the four day jump, I've seen it. You know, it, it does work, but you've got to have faith in that. OK, and, and you, you know, and you're only going to be ready on the day. 
Yeah. So don't, you know, you're going to, and each day you're just going to grow. So yeah, the last four days are critical. Yeah. You want to be at your peak when you're going through the exam. You don't want to peak yeah. before the exam. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so that kind of slows you down. It kind of helps you just, you know, compose yourself, stay calm. Yeah. And I always say those last four days, go somewhere nice. Just go to a coffee shop or go somewhere, you know, in a library and just read and just chill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just chill. You, you know, in a night, in a sit in a nice armchair and just read those questions. And and some students say, Nick, where did this technique come from? I'm not going to lie, and I need, I need to share this with everyone. When I did my CTA many years ago, um, my, uh, my wife wanted to go on hot. Well, I was literally newly married, and my wife wanted to go on holiday. And and I said, I've got exams coming up. I need to pass these. And she said, Bring your notes with you. Never really thought of that. And I kid you not, I started reading things by the pool in Cyprus, things that I wouldn't usually understand started making sense. And it was actually, and I, and I kind of suddenly appreciate it was the environment around me that suddenly, you know, and you, you take it for granted that oh, it could be anywhere. You need to be somewhere that's conducive to learning. And here I was so relaxed. I was on holiday. Things suddenly just clicked, you know, and that's what you want in the last four days is things start clicking. So yeah. it's all about being in that right environment. Brilliant. Um, br brilliant advice there. And, and everyone should go and book themselves a week in Cyprus. Prior there to you the go. Exam. This is it. There you go. There's your, there's your sign off. Um, <laughs> we, we've had a question from the audience. Um, uh, and please, guys, keep them coming in. Um, what is a watch? What is watch out? Can you please give an example? I've never heard of it. Awesome. <laughs> so basically a watch out list is a list of anything you've forgotten so what I everybody has their own variations but what I did was for each key topic um, I'd have an A3 piece of paper and every time I made a mistake in relation to that topic or there's a key condition I forgot I'd write it on this sheet of paper and what you get at the end was like the last couple of weeks before your exam is a list of all your key er errors that you've made and the key things you've forgotten um, so what you can do was what I did um, was I'd read through those first thing when I've First started studying and last thing before I stopped studying and it's basically a reminder of all those errors and mistakes and it's like it's a tailored like adv uh, like revision book for yourself basically <laughs> so it means that you can really focus on those weaker areas I don't know if I've explained that very good <laughs> if you wanted to okay. add that right so let, let, let's do some examples all right so if you're doing the OMB or individuals advanced technical paper okay um, let's look at a shareholder and badar yeah, that all of you should know the four conditions for a shareholder and badar. 5% trading company working 24 months. Everyone knows that. But what you've then also got to know is what are the what are the other ex, what are the other issues? So there can be a situation where if the shareholder doesn't own 5% of all four, the voting rights, the share capital, the distributable profits and the assets on a winding up, then there's actually a different rule. Yeah, there's a different rule where bad R can still apply. And so what we need you to do is not is not just learn the main condition, but also be aware of the sub conditions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what students don't do. OK, so that that's an issue. OK, if you're doing taxation of large corporates, OK, and you're looking at a controlled foreign company, there are five exemptions. OK, and one of the exemptions is all to do with low profit margin. OK, so and if you ask any student, what's what is the low profit margin rule? And they'll say 10 percent. But there's actually a little bit more to that. It's also you also need to know that it's 10 percent based on operating expenditure. OK, less a few deductions. So what you've got to do, yes, have your base knowledge. But what the watch out does when you get it wrong in an exam, in a question before the exam, is it fine tunes it. So you're adding those extra little bits of finesse in that makes you technically a lot sharper. OK, that's what we're talking about. It's those extra points that get you extra marks. OK, so that's what you want to do. And don't be scared and the more and, and have it very clear. So Autumn said she writes it on an A3 shape, sheet of paper. I get students doing it on flashcards or doing it on Excel, but it does have to don't just have like a, a kind of like a random one sheet. Make sure it is per topic, like Autumn says, so it makes your watch outs more effective. Yeah. Does that yeah, help? So, Does that, yeah. So if I was doing one on a business I disposal relief, I'll have associated disposals and then I have like things that I've forgotten, like the market value rule for rent and things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's organized. It was organized to me, maybe not to anybody else. <laughs> exactly. It's personal. It's tailored. Yeah, yeah totally.
So I suppose that's where things like um, knit you you learn via colours, right? Yes. So yeah, colours are really so. If everything in um, if everything in a certain area of tax, you want to put it on, uh, you know, a pale pink piece of paper, then you know that that that's your pink lots, and you're dealing with your private client issues there. And if you're dealing with something international, it might be blue or whatever, you know. And and, and you you do a lot of colour, don't you? Oh, we lost him. Oh dear. Yeah, I can confirm that knitting uses a lot of colour. <laughs> if anybody's seen his revision notes, <laughs> the rainbow in the back of his um yeah. of his library as well. It's uh he's normally he's uh he, we spoke about it actually when I first met him. Um, and he absolutely uses colour for everything because it's yeah. it's the way we learn. Um, yeah, because I'm quite I'm quite visual, and that's why I like the spider diagrams as my watch out list because mm -hmm. I could almost see them before I was looking at them. If that makes sense, like I'd mentally installed them on my brain by the time I was in the exam. Um, so it's good yeah. for like conditions that, and then you've got sub conditions and things like that. Um, yeah, just have to find something that works for you. Really, that's what it's all about. And I think diagrams as well, and shapes and and arrows and stuff, because you remember how you wrote that down, and that type of yeah. thing comes back to you in the exam, right? Yeah, I think sometimes um, just even right when you're confused about something or you're trying to learn something, even just writing it down makes a big difference um, yes. because you retain it much better. I don't know what it is about it. There must be some science behind it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's what the it's, everybody's brain learns differently. And that's, I think, really important. Like you were saying earlier, it's just very, very individual for everybody. And you need to yeah. take what Nitin's saying to you and apply that to how you work unless there's something drastic here where he's sat but someone's like oh my god I've never even thought of that and that's brilliant then obviously yeah. th that would be very useful to you um yeah. it looks like we've lost him I'm sure he'll be back in a moment he's probably <laughs> either run out of battery or the internet's gone down so I'm sure he'll be back in a moment do we have any questions at the moment from any students um we've only had one question tonight I'm conscious of the fact that in the past we've had quite a lot um so does has anybody got anything to ask? We've got a quadruple prize winner here um, and uh, our our chat is quiet tonight. So um, if you've got any, now's the time to be typing um, and then we can we can ask Nit and here we go. Um, here's a question for you then, Autumn. Uh, what advice would you give to an APS student at this stage? And what would you recommend that we should do over the next six weeks in terms of depth of technical Oh, hold on. In terms of technical, terms of depth, of technical knowledge versus question practice or anything else. Yeah, so one of the things that I struggle with with APS was because there was so much focus on exam technique and how you approach that exam is that I felt like my technical knowledge was lacking a little bit because it's difficult to get that balance right because you've got all this technical knowledge that you learned for a previous exam and you've got to learn how to approach this exam because for most people it's the first type of exam they've ever done that's like that so it is a lot um so what I used to do was I'd do a question if I if it was a full day like a weekend day I'd try and do a question in the morning and then I'd follow that up with technical revision based on what I'd got wrong and I found that that balance really helped because it meant that I was constantly pushing myself to move forward and leaving some time to go over technical knowledge still um, as you get close to the exam you might want to do more questions and you'll you'll feel when it's right for you because you'll be like well there's no point looking at that when I can learn more from doing a question um, and it's all about getting the right balance for you again so try and error really try doing a question in the morning and then debriefing it and then looking at those topics is that too much for you um, do you get the most out of it do you need to split it into two days it's almost experiment a little bit and then decide on something it's difficult to give one set of advice without knowing more about how much content you know but if you got to the AT paper if you're doing just the APS then you definitely will have that technical knowledge it's just refreshing it really I said before when you learn something a second time you retain it much better and it comes back a lot quicker as well I think that's brilliant advice really really good and a, a really nice strategy as well for people and it's and it's not cramming it's logic and timely so yeah great yeah. I think I think because the amount of content at APS and AT CTA exams it's difficult not to start cramming and panicking and rushing through things but it's almost better to go slower and, and just accept that you can't cover particular bits in detail than not go slow and rush through things and not understand it properly because for these exams you need to really have a good understanding mm -hmm. yeah i agree um another question is uh for questions from revision qb did you do from question one to the end or same questions together i did 
similar topics together I found that was better for me I did try doing them in order at the start and then I found that switching around topics because I had like bits I wanted to learn more on so I almost found it better to go well I'm going to attempt every question that's got something to do with business I suppose or relief in it and then what I could do is update my technical knowledge on the areas that I got wrong and then attempt another similar question and it, you almost like start to build a better understanding because you're repeating those similar points with slightly different scenarios you're getting a very good understanding of a topic um, so yeah it comes down to trying out but for me I found the approach of working in key topic areas work the best and that's just a bit of reading which questions first because I, I think the guides when I did my exams the guides actually told you like the key topics that come up um, so it's just actually working out. I think I had, I, what I did was have an Excel and every time I did a question I updated it because I did questions multiple times um, just to cover the key topics and that meant that when I was doing another key topic I could go back and identify the right questions quickly. I think that's really mm -hmm. important Ali, sorry about that, I had a power cut. Oh uh, do you know what, we thought it might be something to do with the battery, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so yeah yeah yeah, so it's back on, so it's, it's all cool, thank you. So look, um, I think it's really key um if you're going to use the revision question bank please don't start from question one um i think what i i think what, what will help you and boost your confidence very quickly is you do you group up the questions okay so i use colors so if it's to do with cgt uh comps i, I have so i, I kind of say right because the, the the tollies kaplan question banks are brilliant yeah they kind of tell you what what's being tested so you can organize it and so if you're doing an individual's advanced technical, you should be doing all your restricted shares questions in one go. And you'll suddenly realize they're pretty much very similar, not identical, mm -hmm. but similar. And when you and as Autumn said, as you keep doing each one and reading them, you'll be you'll be scoring even better marks. And then suddenly your, your technical knowledge will just get to a, a really amazing point. Um, and that's a really effective way of learning. So as you then progress through the weeks in October, okay, you know, you're, you've got the technical coverage there. Yeah, without having to need to refer to the manuals. So doing it by grouping it by topics is is fantastic. Yeah, I totally also good. think it's easier to pick on, up on the key scenarios and change Agreed. the facts as you're going through to try and totally. test your knowledge as well. Um, yeah. If you do them in groups, yeah. We had a question um, Nick, whilst you were off, which Autumn sure. to, uh, answered perfectly. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 but I just wondered if you had anything to add. Sure. Um, it was what advice would you give to an APS student at this stage and what would you recommend that we should do over the next six weeks in terms of depth of technical knowledge versus question practice or anything else? Um, let's see if you answer it any differently. Uh, <laughs> so I think so APS, I my students get checklists. So if you're my student, it's already been done for you. OK, so the checklist is how much technical knowledge I want you to have. Um, my students then get past papers. So I think I so you've got to be having the technical running in the background. But I think the first problem with an APS paper is you've got to learn to spot the issues. Yeah, if you can't spot the issues, you're going to fail. OK, and within that, the awareness level topics are quite key. The VAT, the IHT. And I think reading questions is really key. Um, I I'm I always say to my students, you should be you need to start planning. OK, because the planning is the critical bit where you've got to know how much calculations you're going to do, what are the main issues and then awesome, you know, the technique, get your exec, get your exec summary done first. You know, what are the five points you want to tell the client? Um, and I think I know the other tutorial bodies like to do the exec summary last. That doesn't sit with me. I'm not saying they're wrong. I prefer my approach and I do. And I very much encourage my students to be writing up a one report a week. OK, uh, I think that is key. The more you can practice writing, OK, can help you kind of soften the language. I think all of that. So APS is quite time consuming. It's quite involved because it's not as technically demanding as an advanced technical paper. It's you showing the quality of how you can articulate. I don't know how far off I was from autumn, but. Uh, <laughs> I give a more practical example. Yeah, very practical. Very so practical. what I used to do at the weekends was I do two questions a week because it's mean it. But yeah. what you should do at the weekend is I'd spend. Well, I, I'm early riser, so 6 a.m. till midday doing a question, debriefing it. And then I'd spend the rest of the afternoon 
targeting my revision in terms of key things I got wrong. I'd go and read about that topic if I thought I needed to and things like that. Yeah. But do you remember, Autumn, when you did APS, do you also remember how we did it? Like the questions we did, we spent a lot of time yeah. looking at issues. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the planning bit where you were like, I'm missing things. Do you remember? Yeah. So, yeah, I do, so I do that. I do that as well. <laughs> yeah. And also, do you remember the other bit was, and this work, was yours open book when you did it? Yes, was it, it was, yeah. Yeah, so do you remember we did the portfolio model answers? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the key bit that you've got. What it is, Ali, I'm, I'm teaching APS at the moment and I'm, I've taken scripts in and the, the first few scripts that students send me, they're awful. Yeah, they're literally awful, but but they need to be awful for them to improve. Yes, and absolutely. yeah, and they're, and they're falling into the traps that lead to a fail. OK, and so you've got to get script reviews done. You've got to learn from them. And if you don't, if you're at home, if you're a distance learning student, I, I said this yesterday in the APS session, go and look at the candidate scripts. OK, there are not the official solutions. Please avoid those. Look at the candidate scripts. They're a really good benchmark, OK, of what can be produced in two and a half hours. Yeah. And and I do echo what or if you can do more than one. Great. I don't want to pressure people. But it needs to be done to time, two and a half mm -hmm. hours. And that's something that people don't do. They don't take it seriously, you know, and try and practice on exam four once it's released in a few in a week's time, hopefully, and, and really get used to that execution. I think that I think that's really, really important. Brilliant. OK, um, another question. Uh, what advice would you give to someone doing AT and APS paper at the same time in terms of when you target revision for each? Should you focus on building technical knowledge before revising APS a lot? I'll let Autumn answer that one first. Um, well, I've got the same response to you, Nick. I think about it, doing two at the same. If you don't have to do two at the same, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> because that was the big message last time round. <laughs> yeah. The the problem is is that whilst it is very similar content, except from the awareness stuff, it's complete. Like it's a completely different exam. It, does depend on you as a person at that time I hadn't done many reports for done the odd one but not lots so it's a different kind of mindset you need to get into the exam and I know mm -hmm. me personally if I did an AT paper and then two days later did an APS I'd fail both of them because I won't be able to cope with that transition because it's just it's just different isn't it it's not the yeah. same exam even though it's similar content yeah, yeah. yeah. It's two look, different hats isn't yeah. it yeah yeah I, I think look if I'm being honest with you um I think you, if it was me, I'd spend 80% of my time on AT because I think you need, the, and the reason why I don't like students doing both, and I know this is not going to help the student, but trust me, I'm going somewhere with this, is to do an APS paper properly, you need to be technically proficient in that AT paper. Yeah, and that's why so many people fail the APS. They're missing issues. They're not, so I was doing last night, the taxation and large corporate groups APS session for the CIOT. So I, I went off tangent as I do. And I said, right, let's talk about the May 24 paper. And I, and I had some three lovely, four lovely retakers in there. And I said, did you spot a DPT? Did you spot CFC? Did you spot this? And they're like, no, no. But when I went through it, one of the students said, actually, Nick, you're making it look really easy. Yeah. And the only problem is you've got to be technically hot on what you're doing yeah and so if you're in this situation where you're doing both AT and APS focus more on the AT okay try and get that technically on point I would say try if if you can read the candidate scripts you know allocate one day to APS and go straight into planning reading um, candidate scripts and go into the application yeah because it's a very it's a, it's a very very different paper and I think you should watch the earlier session we did on APS I think there's so much in there there is so much in there, yeah. so much. And, you know, you do a lot of it very naturally in your day to day job. Right. So you're yeah. hoping that you're going into this uh, at a stage where if technically you're up to speed yeah. and you've been listening to what your employers say about what clients want, then yeah. you should be able to pass that if you're technically there. Yeah, what I get, and I'll repeat the point I made last time, I get quite frustrated where I think students are sometimes missold um they you, you often get told oh do both together it's the same content yes it's but it's not yes it's omb at and omb aps it's the same content on that level but then the aps paper has all the awareness stuff 
So you're actually you're actually learning another paper on top to be able to cope with it. And the execution of the answer is completely different. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not as straightforward as people think it is. So, yeah, to, to that person, um, definitely come and ask for the APS um, yeah. webinar if you, if you haven't seen it. Another question. Uh, when you're approaching questions, did you have a standard approach, i.e. setting out pro formas first, then going into detail or working through the question point by point or planning out your answer before you started or other? I'm very conscious of the time pressures. Can I go? For, can I go first, Autumn? I, I'm not a big fan of if you don't need a pro forma. So is this student CTA or ATT, Ali? Do you know? I don't know, unfortunately. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. OK, for ATT. If you can, let, need... if you can let us know if, <laughs> if you are, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. So for ATT, you don't need to do that because it's open book. You've got everything ready. I'm not a big fan. I think it's a complete waste of time doing pro formas at a CTA level, personally, um, if it's a written question. I think what you've got to do is what we all talked about was I, you need to jump straight. You need to read the requirement, look at specifically what the requirement wants you to do. Then you've got to go line by line and you've got to practice. You've got to in each sentence, the examiner is giving you a clue. OK, and that's what you've that's what you've got to work on. It's not just about knowing your technical. You've got to interpret. See, every question is a client problem. Mm. OK, that's how you've got to look at it. Every question is a client problem. You've got to under, you've got to unravel what the client problem is and find a tax solution. Yeah. And then think, is there an election that can be made to help the client? That is literally CTA. Doesn't matter what stream you do. OK. And that's the bit you've got to work on. OK, so it's always about technical knowledge, reading the question and then building your knowledge gaps. And, I, and you've got to practice planning. I always say right now, spend 10 minutes planning. Yeah, no more than 10 on an 80 question. You will get faster and faster because you'll start you'll start seeing repetition. You'll connect with things a lot better. OK, the first two weeks will be horrible. You'll be slow. You'll be feel like you're drudging along. But after that, you pick up a lot of speed, and especially when you do all the topics together, like all the you know, do all the questions by topic. It makes it easier as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think one thing that made the planning easy for me is when I realised that actually you don't need to write sentences, you just need to write a word because <laughs> you know yeah. what you're, you you mean by that word. As long as you know yeah. and you can read Agreed. your own note, that's fine. Because um, I think I got in the habit of writing too much down and that that was delaying me and I was getting stressed about how much time I was spending planning a question. And I thought, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to do it to time in the exam? But the one thing that I started doing was writing a keyword or a key condition or write, just writing yeah, yeah something yeah. something that would jog my memory enough for me to then go and write the full answer and if yeah, it's just I, yeah. practicing to get there isn't it yeah definitely the 60 second checklist that what me and autumn are talking about i've been using this for years with students is so you know have have the key things that affect that topic to so give you a quick example um if you're doing purchase of own shares and you're looking at the capital conditions if I was to put that in, if I was to put that in, say, keywords, unquoted trading company, UQT, uh, benefit the company, five years, UK resident, three year IHT rule, 30 percent percentage test, 25 percent reduction. Would you agree, Autumn? Yeah. Yeah. So th so anyone who's doing personal own shares, we like, OK, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Yeah. So And then you then you apply it to the question. OK, so that that's a really nice way over the next few weeks to kind of take you to the next level. Yeah. And that that uh, student uh, is uh, CTA uh, Advanced Technical. Perfect, thank you. So, yeah, then, then yeah, that's perfect. Brilliant. OK, um, another question. Did you spend time going through the model answer or just the marking grid? As sometimes the model answer is annoying as it makes one think that we need to state all the theory and then apply to question. But I have now told I've, I've now been told not to state the theory. I used to waste so much time and not have time to finish the question. Autumn, do you mind if I take this one first? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if the, this student might have been on the o OMB session with Libby, possibly I could have, I could be wrong. So we did an OMB session uh, recently for the CIOT. I, I think the main problem when students are looking at the official solutions they're fantastic, but they're not representative of what you can produce in the time. OK, and so because it's a model answer, 
the CIOT are being very gracious and very generous in, in helping you. They'll state the rule for you and then they'll give you the application. OK, because they want you to help you. They want the model answer to be beneficial to a student. But in the exam, get straight to the point. Yeah, so for example, if I take business asset disposal relief as an example, I would say Ali qualifies for bad art. That will get you a mark. Yeah, because then you explain the reason Ali has held a minimum 5% in her trading company for the last 24 months while she's been working. Rather than the student saying to get bad art, the shareholder has to own a minimum 5% in a trading company. So you get a lot of students that do that. They'll write the whole theory, then literally repeat it again and then run out of time. And when we did this recent OMB session, which was amazing that Libby did, Libby Morris, OK, students were like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's that straightforward. Yeah. And so this is where, again, the answers, as Autumn said, they're really short applied answers. OK, and you're you're, you're going to it's a game changer. So, yeah, so no more double writing. Sorry, Autumn. Over yeah, with, with the candidate scripts, I always view them as helping me revise rather than being a yeah. perfect answer that I need to re reproduce. You don't need to review reproduce it one that's a hundred percent answer and two it's got too much information in it <laughs> so you need you need to just use that to update your knowledge and help yeah. you understand where you went wrong rather than try and reproduce it so that's there for your guide not this is what we want to see exactly brilliant and uh student said yes so i think they they were on the uh the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the webinar, so. yeah great brilliant. okay um, another question here. Um, I'm a first time CTA OMB AT student. Do you have any specific method that would be best to highlight legislation? And should this be minimal? Do you want to go on it? <laughs> OK, I was hoping, yeah, I don't, I don't, want, to, don't want to bully you also because you're going to tell me off later on. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, BPP's view is for OMB, you don't need the legislation that much. And I want Autumn to contradict me if she can okay whereas for individuals advanced technical and taxation of large corporates and iht advanced technical you do need the legislation a lot more okay and we've we've done a track analysis of the last eight or nine papers on omb 80 the legislation use has been minimal i wouldn't i don't think you need it personally okay. unless it's admin gone or sorry yeah so well, for taxation, I don't know if you know this, Nick, but I didn't use the legislation at all for that for sticks. <laughs> I didn't have time. I didn't have time. Yeah, um, so you can do it without using legislation, but you have to be. I was very technically strong going into that exam. Like I knew everything off the top of my head. Um, personally, me, I can't use legislation that much because I find that I waste too much time in it and it's just not an option. Um, I'd much rather be technically strong and go into the exam knowing that I know anything that could come up and have the legislation as a backup if just in case. Um, but that's me personally and again that's me showing how i've used my initiative to adapt how i'm attempting things to make sure that i'm going to pass um so that might work for some people might not work for anybody but it's just up to you to decide what is helpful and what's not um i know for you nick you always say highlight the admin points which is great advice i think because they're the points that are very detailed and you're not necessarily going to remember them inside out before the exam um so that's helpful to do that but yeah, that's my I'm, take I'm a, on it yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a big fan of admin. I think certain things on admin that are obscure, like for large corporates, if you if you get a question on senior accounting officer that came up, uh, or if there's a question on tax strategies for a large company, it's all in the ledge. It's, it's like an open book exam. You can use that. Um, Demerger conditions, if you remember. OK, you know, because there are quite a few. But otherwise, for OMB, no, don't. I don't think you need it. OK, good. Um, another question. Uh, when should we be looking to do a advanced technical individual practice questions to time? Very too awesome. Um, at this stage, I'd want to be attempt at least one a week to time. Um, and as as you get closer, more and more. But it's more about listening to yourself. If you're struggling with a question like, oh, my God, I can't do it time. Then it's much better for you to attempt it properly in terms of actually have a good go at it than stress about the time factor um, mm -hmm. the time's more about learning how you your exam techniques or how you're going to approach the exam have you got your time is right in terms of how long you need to spend reading how long you need to spend planning how long you need to spend answering it's more that aspect but actually attempting the question is more important so if that's stopping you from attempting questions i'd say do a couple not to time and see how you get on 
Yeah, I agree. I, I think if you can do one or two a week and try and get coverage on the others by reading and reviewing, you know, you want it, you want, so that will get you the syllabus coverage. So, it, this, and also once exam four is released, which I know it's going to be soon, you want to practice on exam four. Okay, you've got to get the familiar, got to get the familiarity with it's, it's not the best in the world, but it's it's not that bad. OK, I know it has its issues and you you've got to get familiar so it can also help you time wise in the exam. Yeah, that's key. Great. Um, I've got another question here. Um, OMB advanced technical question. Um, I've done two mocks and started to look at questions. I feel I failed to spot many issues. How can I get better at spotting these issues? Every question feels like I'm only 20 to 30 percent there. So I think this is more to do with not remembering the content very well, but the understanding is there. Should we use notes while starting to do questions? And do you have a technique on how to spot issues? Over to you, Olsen. Um, so what I would say is stop doing the, do a question not to time go through it line by line and actually just think what does this mean why is the examiner telling me this because normally there's 90% of the time 99% of the time there's a reason why you're being told something and if you can't identify that then when you, we need to firstly attempt the question and then when you debrief in have a look at the examiner script and the candidate script and the examiner comments examiner comments are key I think and try and identify why you're not picking up on that topic and if you're still struggling then you might need to go back and just review the topic and on, and that, at that point, you should be able to understand what you're missing and the key points. It's more about at this stage, looking at why you're missing things and why you're not identifying them. And the more you do it, the easier it gets and the better you get. And you, you'll be surprised how quickly you can become good at it. It's just having the perseverance to get through the first 10 questions. But once you're there, it does come more naturally. Yeah, I agree. If you're if you're someone who's getting 20, 30 percent initially on reading a question, can I be honest with you? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, if I'm being honest. Um, and I think like Autumn said, you've got to be very honest with yourself. Did you read it line by line? Because every sentence there was a clue. Did you connect with that? OK, and when you're going through the marking grid, what I would want you to do is literally focus on why did you miss it? Yeah, you need to question with why was it a knowledge gap? Great. Put it on a watch out. OK. Or was it a careless mistake where you just skim that sentence, which which is often what people do? OK, and so, yeah, and you sharpen up on the focus. So you've got to be really honest. With, OK, that was me being silly, careless. OK, and yeah, so and you will get better, as Autumn says, it, definitely. But you, it, the line by line is critical for CTA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was Some looking at um, an ATT, sorry, um, I was looking at an ATT examiner script um, the other week when I was looking at a question and it mentioned that most students have forgotten to deduct broker's fees from a capital disposal and that's mm. like, a, that's a, such a basic point but there's half a mark yeah. for it and it's not that I don't think students knew that, it's more they've skim read it and not taken enough yeah. time and I think it's making sure you're actually taking the time to read it properly. Yeah, well, awesome, were you in my class that time? Uh, on revision where a student forgot to add back depreciation no I don't think so I went mental I went absolutely ballistic so this student <laughs> forgot to add back 40 million pounds in a CT comp and it was half a mark and a nice and the student was like you're being a little bit rude you're you know you're overreacting I said tell you what let's have a conference call with your tax partner what if you made that error at work? Yeah, and this student was a little bit, you know, bit <laughs> not great. And it was like, oh, that wouldn't happen. I go, why wouldn't it happen? And he goes, because I'll be focused at work. And there's the problem. Yeah, I go, you're demonstrating to the examiner that you are not going to make that mistake. To you, it's just half a mark. It's 40 million. Yeah, the examiners look at it. Are you competent to join this profession? OK, and all of you here and anyone watching the recording need to be honest with yourselves. Are you are you competent? Yeah. Are you going to be are you going to get there and show the best of you? OK, and I feel like a lot of students don't bring the best version of themselves on the day. Yeah, when they can. OK, and that that that's something personal for you to figure out. Yeah, it's uh, and this line by line is important because it was there. 40 million was there. Yeah, but this person just didn't have the focus. 
Yeah. So interesting. So th these questions, they're, they're not going to tell you someone's married because they're for the fun of it. They're doing it for a reason. They're not yeah. going to tell you that they used to own a different business. They're doing it for a reason, not just because yeah. they want you to have a bit more information. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Th it's, everything in there is is mm. clues as to your issues. Right. Absolutely. And that's that's it. And so many students just spend time in the manuals learning the rules. So when they get to a question, they can't cope because they, yes, they've got the knowledge, but they're literally like can't interpret. They just don't know what to do. OK, mm -hmm. and that's where we're trying to bridge the gap here. That's why yeah. this session, you know, we wanted to host it to help people. Oh, so useful. So, so very useful. Um, OK, great. Um, we've we've not got any more questions. So if anybody wants to um, ask any more, please do. I was just going to do a bit of a, a, a bit of a summary here um, of the key things that I've picked out uh, that I think people need to really hone in on. Um, stop with the study manuals now. <laughs> stop with the study manu manuals. Um, study away from home where possible, away from distractions. Yep. Get yourself an effective timetable. Mindset is huge going into it, these exams, um, especially ACCA students, because the mindset definitely needs to change there. Yep. Um, revise on topics that you get wrong. So when you're practicing your questions, any topics that you got wrong, put them on a watch out, revise on them. That's exactly what, you know, getting things wrong is not an issue. It is a good thing because it means that you're then going to go and learn it, which will prepare you for your exam. Mental health is more important than anything. And I loved what you said, Autumn. Give yourself permission to fail this exam. It's just yeah. an exam. Read your question, plan, focus on where you're going wrong. Have an exam game plan. Um, whatever that may be, and there's been, we talked about the different strategies of going, you know, easy last or doing it numerical one to six, like you you, you do it autumn. Yeah. Um, four days before your exam, no cramming, no more questions. Read questions, think about them, but but do it in a nice place. Yeah. Take yourself away from that. Stop writing. Stop keyboarding. Give your fingers a rest. Yeah, and that sixty second checklist when you're planning through those questions and spotting those issues. Use shorthand, use abbreviations, so important. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Um, we have had another question, but is there anything else that I've missed out there that was key to tonight's session, Autumn? I think you've pretty much covered it. It's like the perfect plan. <laughs> yeah, knitting. I, I, yeah, I want to share. So I would say, building what Autumn said was, try and take the pressure off. I think so many students go into that exam with lead on their shoulders. You know, I've got to get through. I've got to pass, you know, and for confidentiality reasons, I can't mention this person's name. Um, but this person was about to quit CTA APS. Um, they'd failed a few times and she was like, Nick, I'm just going to give up. OK. And I said, you know what? And th they literally made their mind up that they're going to give up. And I said, look, do me a favor. Just let me help you. Do what you need to do for the next few months. Just go in that exam and just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. Just just don't don't don't. Okay. I said, can you do that? She got maybe so I wasn't getting a, I wasn't getting a definitive. And I kept in touch with the student probably once a month, making sure she's OK. And she was still like, Nick, I don't feel ready. I said, and we went through stuff. She went in and she passed them. Brilliant. Because just, just pressure. It's pressure. Yeah, because I, when, when we, we then had a chat afterwards, she goes, I'm so glad you made me sit that exam. OK, and I said, but you weren't bloody helpful, you know, every time I rang you. And uh, she was like, Nick, trust me. When I went to that exam, I just literally just I said, you know what? I'm just going to do what I can and I don't care. You know, and it, she goes, it brought out the best in me. And she goes, I think historically I went in so wound up that I had to get this, that it it wasn't great. Yeah, so so take the pressure off, guys, and just enjoy. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy learning. Enjoy getting things wrong. And as Autumn says, if you fail, you fail. You, you know, it's part of the learning process. Yeah. 
Yeah, just to add to that is this will probably remember my last minute phone call. Oh god, like, yeah. <laughs> the week before the exam, I was like, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I was like, yeah. I, I just completely lost it. And I was like, I can't do it. It's too stressful. And that's because I'd wound my again, I've wound myself up, especially because yeah. I felt like everybody expected me to pass because I'd done so well in the other exams. And I just put the, so much pressure on myself that I didn't want to do it anymore. But I did end up going, but I went in with the mindset of I might as well try. And yeah. once I decided that I was back, my head was back in the game, I was back in my revision focus. But just it's it's almost frustrating because looking back, you go, what were you even worried about? <laughs> but it's just yeah. being able to accept that it is OK to fail it and it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. Um, and you just need to try your best. And that's all you can do at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, I think, think I, yeah. you've hit the nail on the head there. Also, yeah. that's such good advice for people. Yeah, yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> I've got one more question from the from the troops. Go on. Um, if we can cover that before we go, that'd be brilliant. Sure. So, um, here we go. I'm doing two advanced technical papers: domestic VAT and cross border, which are both on the same day. One, do you have any advice on doing two in the same day? Two, do you have any advice for revising and practising these papers as they're all long written questions? Ouch. I'm going to let Autumn go first. That's a lot in one day. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to attempt that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. Nitin. <laughs> OK. Um, I love, as Autumn, Autumn will tell you, I love written questions. I'm the tutor. I hate numbers, as Autumn knows, right? I don't care about numbers. Um, with written questions, you've got to learn everything by transaction. OK, so everything we've been talking about today, issues, scenarios, every advanced technical paper and APS paper will have a transaction. Yeah, go and go and spot the transaction, go and spot the issue, go and spot the problem. That's your first thing. Once you know what that is, do exactly what Autumn says. Look at the marking guide, OK, or think about what you would do and build up keywords. Does that make sense? Learn to give advice. The examiner is going to give you six clients, six questions, each having different issues and problems. OK, they're not always going to be that different. They might be phrased differently, but if you kind of cut through, cut through all the material, you'll get to it. OK, so it doesn't matter what advanced technical paper you're doing and make sure you don't double write. So don't state the rule. Go in and apply and attack. Short sentences applied. Don't write in paragraphs in CTA. Make a make a point, leave a gap. Yeah. And that that keep a clear presentation. And that's what you need to do. Good advice, sound advice. Um, thank you very much, Nitin and Autumn, um, for not only your time, but just being so open and honest with these guys. Because yeah. you know, it's 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 really is um it's, it's priceless giving this advice to these people. Um, the recording will be sent out to everybody within 48 hours. Um, so, but if you've got any questions, I'm sure that Nit and Autumn are on standby um, for any last minute questions, reach out to them, connect with them on LinkedIn, you know, um, have a chat to them should you, should you need to. Um, may I wish everybody the best of luck. Um, Absolutely. You know, um, it goes without saying we want to know how you get on in January. Let us know if these webinars have helped you in the slightest. Um, we, we want to hear from you. We truly hope that they've gone some way in helping you pass your exams. Um, but good luck. Um, don't stress out too much in the next six weeks. Um, we'll be thinking of you all um and we wish you all the best um but from me that is all thank you everybody for coming and paying attention this evening um and knitting and autumn thank you so much for your time yeah, and also Sorry. thank you to ali and lauren and everyone behind the scenes at pro recruitment group you know if, if it wasn't for you ali these webinars would not happen yeah and i just want to say genuinely you've got a passion you and kevin have got an absolute passion for helping students OK, so, yeah, uh, thank you to you as well. And gang, get, make gets it me count. out of bedtime. Gets me out of bedtime. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, make each day count. Make each day yes. count. You've got this. Good luck, everybody. Thank Good you. Luck. OK, Good luck. bye.